We are now joined by Hampton University head coach Ed Joyner Jr. along with student athletes Charles Wilson Fisher and Malik Trent Street following a 71-63 defeat to North Carolina Central in the MEAC tournament championship game. Uh, coach, congratulations on the run to the final and if you could give us an opening statement, please. Uh, it's a game of runs, it's a game of stops, it's a game of baskets. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't make enough stops and, and we didn't make enough baskets. Uh, <clears throat> I don't feel bad about some of the things that we did. There were some of the things that we've been successful at all year. You know, for some reason, the, the ball didn't go in the basket for us tonight. Uh, on, on the flip side of it, defensively, uh, we, we wanted to make sure we, we, we shut down the uh, shooter, uh, Gardner, and we wanted to make sure we, we, we kept uh, the big kid Davis up under control. We did that. Uh, although Revis had a good game, I thought they had a couple of other kids, a little point guard, 14. Uh, the 55, some of those kids made a few plays that they hadn't made all year. We hadn't seen them make. And <clears throat> those are the things that get you championships. That's it. Questions? I didn't think so. I thought, again, I thought we did some of the same things that we did all year. We got some of the same shots that we got all year. <clears throat> we just didn't, we didn't convert. You know, now you do have to credit their defense. They're a pretty good defensive team, but uh, I just think, that, you know, at certain points in the game, we may have pressed a little bit. But again, at, at about three minutes left, it probably was 51 51 time. You know, somewhere around there, getting down to those last three minutes, some of the shots that we, we took didn't fall. And again, they had some guys that we kind of dared to make a few plays, and they made them. You know, it was time with you didn't score something, and you score by the straight points there. Um, from your from your perspective there, what what do you feel happened in that stretch that, that turned the game? I I think probably I think we blew it a seven or two, but a couple of those. If I'm not mistaken, that's two, twice the little guard got in the last <coughs> score, 14, <clears throat> 55 uh, uh, hit a shot, and the kid four hit a shot. So that's probably eight of those point, eight of those 11 points right there. And those are the guys, systematically, if you're going to dare or put in a position to make a shot, those are the guys by law of averages you're going to try to make, make a play. And they did. You know, that, that's part of the game. If anything went wrong with that, that's on me. You know, I'll take the blame for that. That's the game plan. You know, and, uh, and they tried to follow the game plan. Those guys made the plays, and it happens. It's part of the game, you know. Malik, what's it like to feel like kind of slipping away? You guys were 58 all. I think you had a three-pointer and a tie at 58. And then just to kind of get so frustrating that you can't get done what you <coughs> normally do. I mean, it's not, it wasn't, <coughs> Nothing in offense when we did wrong. It was just defense. You know, I missed a couple of assignments, and you know they made us play. We just missed a couple of defenses and assignments. I mean, defense win ball games, and if you don't, you don't lock in at the end of the game, you're not gonna win. I mean, the best team to execute the best come out to make me so. Was there any consolation to know you? Uh, I mean, I mean, NIT is cool, but we wanted to. You know, we wanted to leave out the MIAC with the MIAC champion, so that was the goal. And I too was cool, but we won it in the NCAA tournament. Coach, it's been an up and down year, not just for you, but off the floor. Can you just explain kind of where your emotions are right now, what they were like when the clock hit down? I mean, you're kind of dealing with just that you lost the ball game. Uh, right then, I think my emotions kind of wasn't personal. You know, you kind of go to the guys and you kind of want to make sure that they understand. You know, even though we didn't reach our ultimate goal, you know, we, we put ourselves in the position where we're going to continue to play basketball. And it's going to, it's going to take a couple of day, days to get this sting off. But, I mean, you know, again, at the end of the day, I, I am at time in months to worry about my own emotion. You know, I got a lot of other people that I got to worry about. I sit down and think about what we've done and, and, and what has happened over this year, good or bad, you know, at, at a later date. Right now, it's just not the time. Look, well, as uh, we grew up on a half of things, and then we came out real strong in the second half, and then you were sort of playing behind the rest of the half. So, um, what happened in that stretch? They, they got, I guess, three threes, I think, on the that stretch. 
Yeah, and, and again, during that stretch, 55 hit the three threes. I think he made six threes all year, maybe five threes all year. Uh, we, we set our defense to try to put ourselves in a situation where we can help on the big kid and be able to try to contain Revis and five off, get, off getting off jump shots. Uh, I think Revis hit one during that stretch, but that was in transition uh, where, where they got a rebound off one of our misses, was able to push it, and he got the three. But the other one was 55. And again, by part of the game plan, if we're going to dare somebody to take a shot, it's going to be him to make sure that we can cover the inside and try to stop Davis, who I think probably number two in the country. <laughs> you know, field goal percentage. And he made the shot. You got to get shot. You got to give, take your hat off to the young man. He made plays to help his team win. Well, we didn't miss anything after Joel with the Oh, yeah, it meant the world to us. You know, that was the goal. We, we knew that this would, would be our last tournament. Even though we didn't talk about it a lot or make that the emphasis, going into the game, I don't know how you couldn't, you know, you know, you know grasp the opportunity that you had. Everybody remembers your first and everybody remembers your last. You know, and this was our last time in the MEAC, and we wanted to go out the right way. <laughs> we won the regular season championship. We made the championship game, but we didn't go out with the goal that we wanted. And that's... You know, that, that's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. But we'll move on. Life goes on. Charles, you played on uh, two championship teams here. Um, I don't know if it's easier to take this or tougher, or does that have any factor in that at all? <coughs> Anytime you lose out on your goal, it's going to be tough. Um, those two championships, they matter to me, but I wanted to get one with, the, with this group of guys as well. Um, and so to fall short of that, it, it, it's, it's going to hurt for, for a while. You really answered this earlier, but the same question with uh, Derek and the NIT, uh, take a little of the same, knowing you don't have to quit playing right now? Knowing that we have an extra game or two, or however many games it is, it's cool, but it's still not the goal that we had in mind going to the tournament. So ultimately, no. Nah. The players, uh, what's your uh, interpretation of what happened the last game from their The first four minutes of, of the second half were really crucial, and they came out and established an aggressive tone from the jump, and um, and we and we didn't meet that. We didn't meet that with fire. So if you give a team confidence and they get a chance to get rolling, like you, like you saw, we, we were playing from behind from there. Uh, gentlemen, thank you.